In parallel to the one-year mission research that crew members Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko are taking part in, Kelly is participating in another study along with his twin brother, former astronaut Mark Kelly, in which scientists hope to learn more about how prolonged space flight affects the human body right down to the DNA, and it's hoped those findings can contribute to helping keep future explorers safe on trips to deep space. The first of its kind study in the emerging area of omics research is partially funded by the National Space Biomedical Research Institute and Chief Scientist Dr. Graham Scott joins me this morning to tell us more. Good morning, uh, Amiko, and thank you for hosting me here in uh, Mission Control. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, coming. This is really fascinating, interesting um, um, data. So let, um, there's a lot of words that are being thrown around that not everybody is quite familiar with. So we'll start with, first of all, how do you explain to folks about what omics research is? Sure. So omics means that you look at the totality of what's going on inside the cell. So to make that a little more concrete for you, about 12 years ago, um, here on Earth, we completed the sequencing of the human genome. And that the human genome is a recipe. It's a parts list, if you, if you will, for a human being. And so once we have that genome, we can then um, use it uh, and project, if you like, uh, or extrapolate out from that and figure out what proteins might be, might be made because DNA is really a recipe for making proteins. And so we can look inside the cells and we can look, look to see what proteins we can observe. We can look to see what specific gene variations we see in a particular person. Um, and what, what this whole area of omics is doing is it's really opening a new chapter in medicine. So now in the future when you go to visit your, your doctor or if you go to a, a hospital like MD Anderson, um, one of the things that will be done is a genomic sequence to really figure out um, how you might be different. Um, small differences, uh, any two people are about 99.5% Equivalent, so there's about half a percent difference genetically between any two people, but that can make a big difference in terms of drugs that are being prescribed, how we sleep, how we exercise, all of these things. So omics is looking at the totality, at the collective um, milieu, if you will, of biomolecules that are within the cells. And so what does this really mean for you as a, as a subject, a research subject, or a patient, or for Scott Kelly on orbit? Mm -hmm. It means that we're drawing blood, we're looking at the saliva, we're looking at the urine, primarily biofluids, and then we can repatriate those biofluids, in the case of Scott Kelly, back down here to Earth, and then we can use sophisticated molecular diagnostic techniques such as DNA sequencing, to really look and see what is going on with his DNA, with his proteins, with his RNA. And in this case, what's really beautiful is we can do this relative to his brother, okay. who's, who's essentially genetically identical, identical. to Scott. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask you about the, yeah. you know, what, what, how the, the, the comparison of the two of them and what, I mean, obviously that's a very unique um, um, opportunity that we have, but how does that actually, in terms of, um, comparing his DNA, the, the, how does that help um, help with this research right. even more so? Though? Right. So in any experiment, <laughs> you, you like to have controls. You like to have um, a, a research subject that mm -hmm. you're you're doing an experiment on, and then you and then typically you'll have uh, a, a group, often a group of research subjects, where where they're in some controlled environment. So here, what we've got is we've got Scott Kelly on orbit, being subjected to microgravity, space radiation, close confinement all of the stresses of that space environment. And Mark Kelly's here on Earth, and he's essentially leading a normal life. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the really elegant thing is these two individuals, are to a very good order of approximation, are genetically identical. So what, what we can drive towards here is, the, is this very fundamental question of nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. Because these two individuals, to a very good order of approximation, are identical genetically. So therefore, when we look and see, when we do this omics research, which again is looking at the total of how the molecules are changing inside your cells, we have this very 
um, we have the best control that you could that you could dream of, right? Because mm -hmm. they're genetically identical. So it really drives at this nature versus nurture question. And so what so what we can then infer potentially is if we see differences between the two twin brothers, we can say, well, well we're sort of taking the nature piece a little bit, uh, to some extent at least, to a very large extent, out of the equation because the, the, the nurture, the environment is really influencing those differences potentially between the twins. Sure. And we're also tracking each tw twin over time. So not only are we comparing the twin brothers to one another, but we're looking at, in the case of Scott Kelly and Mark as well, their, how their biomolecules are performing before flight, in the case of Scott, during flight, and then after flight as sure. well. So sure. it's a really, really nicely designed study. Yeah, and and I, I can see, you know, how that, um, it, it'll be very fascinating to see how, you know, um, the environment, just the factors of environment can can uh, change and how right. our body reacts to that. So that's, it's very interesting. So tell me now, you had, um, I know you've written about the development of precision medicine. Yeah. Um, can you describe for us what that right. is exactly? Right. So now because we have um, the ability to do genomic sequencing, which by the way, you can do for about $1,000. This is about the price now of an MRI mm -hmm. um, of, of, you know, if you were to go and, and have some part of your body image, it's about the same price. So it's becoming very, very affordable. So now with this genomic information, we can actually look at this half a percent difference between, between any two individuals. And what that can, um, and this is increasingly permeating into different areas of medicine. Mm -hmm. Let's take oncology as an example. Okay. So if somebody was to go to MD Anderson and they were to be diagnosed with cancer, one of the first things that would be done is some genomic sequencing to look at some specific genes. Why are we doing that? Well, we want to prescribe the really tailored treatment for the patient. We don't want the, the last thing we want to do is put a patient on three months of chemotherapy and it's not effective. Mm -hmm. So if we do this genomic sequencing, we can look at the specific variants, the specific genomic makeup, if you will, of an individual and decide whether a particular medicine will be effective, most likely or not. So we're really targeting, we're doing it in a very precise way where we're using this genomic information, we're then informing the treatment. And so this is the kind of paradigm that we're increasingly going to see spreading out through all different areas of medicine. And what we'd like to do is bring this precision medicine strategy bring it to NASA because one of the things that we're going to need to do on these very demanding long duration missions okay, is we're going yeah, to need to... Okay, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Is how is this precision medicine going to help us keep our astronauts safe for those future missions? Well, so, well let, me, let, me, let me give you an example of how mm -hmm. this might be beneficial. So right now on the space station, we have a number of medicines and they're in a, they're in a large kit and... Mm -hmm. and, and um, but it's somewhat generic. There are, there, are, there are all different kinds of medicines. For example, there are sleep medications, there are medications for pain relief, these types of things. But it's not specifically tailored to an individual's makeup. So what we'd like to do, particularly on a long duration mission where there really isn't an opportunity to bring the astronaut back to Earth if there is a medical emergency, we'd like to make sure that the, the correct, the tailored really tailored drugs mm -hmm. are on board for each individual astronaut. Um, other ways that this could come in, right now um, you're aware that some of our astronauts, in fact all of our astronauts are exercising at least maybe two hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, when they return to Earth, we see quite a bit of variation in their muscle mass and their bone mass. Maybe not every single one of them needs to exercise two hours a day. Maybe they could. Maybe some yeah. of them could exercise less. Maybe some of them need to exercise a little more. So it's about really tailoring these countermeasures in a very precise way and using genomic information For a truly to help us personalized exactly to help us do that so now you've got molecular information mm -hmm. so rather than having to put people through a whole lot of sort of exercises and tests on the ground maybe you can use that genetic information via a simple blood test to predict what medicines to take on the space station how long someone might need to exercise um, maybe what sort of um, how their how their sleeping arrangements should be in terms of lighting countermeasures, or how long they might need to sleep, mm -hmm. how susceptible they are to space radiation. These types of things could really help us yeah. um, 
plan and execute a long duration mission much more safely. It is extremely fascinating and I'm so happy you came out to talk to us. Obviously there's a ton of information that we could go on and on and on. I don't have all that time but I really appreciate you coming out. I know you have also talked, um, you've written a blog about it. There's a two part blog series um, online. You can go uh, get that blog available online now at blogs.nasa.gov slash ISS underscore science underscore blog. Again, Dr. Graham Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Sure, my pleasure, Miko. Thank you.